we always talk about Paul Zach's whenever you're on, of course. And I'm just curious, again, your thoughts on it. I mean, we know obviously it's kicked ass basically since launch. Um, and its ratio against Pulse has just been epic. I think right now we're sitting at about 1.75 or so when I looked earlier today. So it's been kind of hanging around that zone against Pulse for a while. And I'm curious, um, you know, you've talked many times about it reaching parity, which if you just said that a year ago, I'll fix the camera issue in a minute. If if you just said that a year ago, I think people would have laughed. I know people would have laughed at you because after it launched, it was like four to one. Everybody was shitting all over Pulse X and everything. We've talked about that like story arc for it where, you know, before the launch, it's like, oh man, 10,000 X Pulse X. And then it's like, oh, the, you know, three times the people had the Pulse X tokens and they had the Pulse tokens. And then things launch and it looks like shit. And now it's just been incredible against Pulse all this time. So kind of what are you still seeing? Obviously the chart's insanely bullish, but I mean, what are you seeing um, in terms of it potentially reaching parity down the road? And another interesting question that I've been thinking about, and I know you have a lot of thoughts on the liquidity providing, you had that awesome kind of like little Maslow's hierarchy of needs type thing <laughs> that you brought on last time, like the pyramid of, of different LPs, which was freaking great the last time you were on. Um, but at what point, you know, I know there's so many variables, Ewok and I have tried to answer this, but at what point with Pulse X doing so well against Pulse, does it become like maybe detrimental to be in that, plain Jane pulse pulse X field on, on pulse X, I guess. So, mm. yeah. Well, mm, if you're not, a, if you're not, well, in terms of the, I guess I can answer that question about the farm first, like pulse pulse X to me is you, you mean basically if you're in there right now, you're expecting that you're going to lose half your pulse, uh, pulse X on this next rip or on the, over the next year, or whatever, however long this takes to hit parity. Um, is that a bad thing though? I don't know. Not necessarily because it depends if you're, if you're a profit maximalist, the farms have to be played more active. I have to actively manage those farms. But if you're just like a long-term investor, your ink yield should cover a lot of the impermanent loss. If, as long as you've been in them for a while and you're going to continue to stay in them. So I'm, I'm, so the farming thing is an, it's an interesting conversation piece on its own. It's tough yeah. in terms of just strictly price action. Like, yeah. This thing, this was my, okay. So just to give context to what I said back here in August, I was like, okay, this is what we saw. We were like somewhere in here. And I was like, yeah, this thing's going to go back. Cause it got rejected off this kind of dashed line. It's been a rejection point in January and February. You couldn't hold it as support in March. What's saying that you're going to be able to hold it now in, in August. Well, it was like clear that it wouldn't. And it came back down, tested the bottom of the trend line, and then the buy and burn was there. And then, you know, a couple, some bid came in, but it was a rotation. It wasn't fresh money, I don't think. I think it was a rotation. And then you got back up here, you got rejected again. But now finally it hit my, um, we're on track for what I thought was going to occur here of this yellow spiky price action. Now we're going up for another test. Um, and, you know, I don't know how long this takes or what this looks like, but I, I have basically by January next year, we should be at like 70% of a pulse basically based on this past bars pattern. So I don't, it's not really, you know, concrete or that helpful, but I mean, if you just draw this out forward, maybe I could uh, extend these lines. Let's see, extend the lines. You could hit it October of next year. You could hit parity. Um, and then and like on the slower timeline, it would be, uh, May of 2026. So that's your current trend. I, why would, here's a question. Why would this all of a sudden get nuked straight down and lose this trend with the buy and burn there de deleting right. literal trillions of them already? Mm -hmm. It seems like, you know. Well, this it is the Pulse serious. X Pulse pair, right? Is what we're looking yeah. at. Yeah. I mean, the price appreciation in Pulse could could take off too. I mean, I mean, I realize it's going to pull pull everything else with it. My thought in the farm like that was, if we do go cyclical four year cycle, just like say we stay on that rather than <laughs> the continuation that you spoke of earlier. Um, it would eventually even back out, right? I mean, you know, you're going to get parity, but will it hold parity? Do you think it keeps parity? Or do you think it does cycle back to that ratio where it's one to three, maybe at one point? Well, 
<clears throat> remember that the buy and burn gets stronger as volume increases. True. So there's a good chance that the mania is so powerful that, you know, this takes its time getting up here. And then all of a sudden, like the volume is getting crazy and you actually go beyond parity back the other way. Maybe it goes even four to one the other way. Like I'm not, I'm not here. To, I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'm just, yeah, I hear you. Insane because what does Max Payne look like? Max Payne looks like y'all were wrong and I was right. And yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm not saying me. I'm saying that that's mar that's how the market treats each other. Right. Is right. Right. When you get when shorts get underwater, when longs get underwater, the market punishes them to the maximum. 